Merry, 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 Merry! It is officially Christmas season. And I know that because I have my Happy Birthday Jesus button on and my Christmas tie. And I probably won't wear it next week. And we don't have any more Wednesday nights this year. So I want to make sure you see my Christmas tie because next week, Lord willing, we will be meeting. We will be meeting on the front lawn in front of the church. That's December 20th, 1030 a.m. We're going to meet out there. We're going to be able to keep our social distancing. Everybody feel healthy. And we're going to be able to sing Christmas carols and talk about Jesus. And then we're going to have probably some little gifts for the kids. No gifts this year for all the adults. We're not going to put those bags together, but it's still a special time of giving. And it's a special time to remind ourselves of what the greatest gift of all is. And that is God so loved agape. God, God so loved, sacrificially loved the whole world of sinners that he gave his only son. The true son of God came to the world. He gave his only son that anyone that would believe in him would not die eternally out of God's presence, but would live forever and ever in a relationship of God, with God that was the original intent before we sinned. So don't forget that John 3.16 is the real verse for Christmas too. And we've been talking about great verses and trustworthy sayings. In fact, uh, the first trustworthy saying that we did together was uh, 1 Timothy 1.15. It says, Christ came to save sinners, into the world to save sinners, of whom we are all recognized, we recognize ourselves as the worst of all sinners. Jesus came to save us. And that is such an important, trustworthy saying. The other trustworthy sayings, of course, we went to were, were 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1, that in order to be successful in the Christian life and to really make it and be a leader and an influencer, you have to aspire, you have to desire, you have to have passion to serve God. And we need to stir up our passion all the time. Our third trustworthy saying was in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 4 through 11 and 8 and 9 says that, that physical exercise and training is important in life to keep our bodies, which are the temple of the Holy Spirit, uh, strong so that we can serve the Lord better. That, that's good to have physical training, but that training in godliness, training in true spiritual things to be like Jesus are of greatest and eternal importance. Well, today I want to share with you another trustworthy saying, and we go to the, the book of Titus, Titus chapter 3. We're going to read Titus 3 verses 3 through 8, and this is trustworthy saying number 4. Then we'll be going back to Timothy, 2 Timothy, and then in the book of Revelation, and when we continue next year with these. But before we have our meeting on the lawn, Let's look at this passage, and if you will, read along with me. Trustworthy saying number four, Titus chapter three, verses three through eight. Listen to this. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. Now, this is really important if you know anything about the book of Titus. Titus is another book 
that's of the pastoral epistles. The Apostle Paul is in prison in Rome, and then he writes Timothy about his pastoral duties in Ephesus, and he writes Titus about his pastoral duties where he had left him on the island of Crete. And the job of Titus was to put things in order, organize correctly the uh, church, make sure that the people on that island where he was pastoring that tended to have a lot of bad habits learn to do good. So here's what Paul said. He had started earlier telling them how to be husbands and wives and family and do their Christian do the Christian life. And he had said in chapter two, for the grace of God has appeared and that has offers us salvation to all people. It appears it, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave him for himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So here in chapter 2, he's already said we're saved by grace, and he saved us so that we would learn to say no to ungodliness. That's sort of like our previous trustworthy saying. We're to train in godliness. And so Paul has already said that. But then in chapter 3, he says, well, here's a trustworthy saying. We're not just to worry about saying no to ungodliness and living pure lives. That's very important. And he teaches that everywhere. The Holy Spirit teaches us that everywhere. That we were saved to be a holy people. But here in chapter 3, this trustworthy saying 4 that we're dealing with today, he says, this is it. There's more to it than that, he says. In Titus chapter 3, verse 8, he says this. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. In other words, we've been saved by grace, not by being good. We have been completely forgiven by God's mercy that we didn't deserve it. We were all horrible people. And we need to be saved now so that we will stop being horrible people. That's important. But it's not just the sins of omission and commission that we need to have right. It's that sometimes we omit or don't do the right thing. And sometimes we commit or do the wrong things. And so here Paul is separating. He's saying we were saved by grace to be a holy people, to be godly. But we were also saved by grace to do good. We couldn't do good before we were saved. We couldn't be saved by, by good works. So it was the good work of Jesus done on the cross that accomplished our salvation. But now that we are forgiven, now that we've been washed, now that we've been healed, we can be like God. We can be good. In fact, that's where the word good comes from, God. There are greetings in Europe where people, instead of saying good morning, they say God be with you. And that's where we get those terms, just like goodbye. Goodbye is God be with you. And here's the thing. We can be now good people for God. We can be givers. We can be generous. We can be happy people. We can be people that serve others agape, love, sacrificial love to other people. So here's the trustworthy saying number four that we're emphasizing here. Not just train in godliness and, don't, and say no to ungodliness, but do this. This is a trustworthy saying, Titus 3.8. And I want you to stress these things so that the, those who have trusted in God, in other words, we've already trusted in him, We've believed him for our salvation. We've received mercy. That those that have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. So here's the thing. Christmas. What do we remember about Christmas? God gave his son. We give to others with the same generous spirit that God had for us. We have for others. We should do that all year long. But the point is we are to concentrate it's a trustworthy saying that if we trusted in the Lord, concentrate on doing good. That doesn't mean just giving gifts. How about doing good? You see, 
We can sit around thinking nice thoughts about people. We can think about giving someone something. We can think about helping someone or we can do it. Get up and do it. And this is what the scripture is saying. It's a trustworthy saying that those of us that have trusted in Christ should focus on doing, not thinking about it, not feeling, not hoping about it, but doing good. Let's do that now in Jesus' name. God bless you.